it's in the most difficult process. If you're starting a new company file and you're trying to set up the company file from scratch, that is one of the most difficult things to do because you have to then put in line all of the underlying uh, uh, things in order to get everything set up, like the, the chart of accounts and you know your bank account and stuff lined up uh, if, you, if you're gonna be tying into the bank feeds and that kind of stuff. All that foundational stuff needs to be in place first. If it's properly in place, then it's gonna be a lot more easy going forward. So we would actually like to use this kind of scenario on the second half of the course when we're gonna get into the more difficult process of starting a company file from scratch. So if you wanna jump into that right away to start a company file from scratch, you can jump to that part of the course. But the easier thing to do at first to get to know the software is to do what often happens when you go to a new company, for example. If you go to another company and you're gonna be working in QuickBooks, you're not gonna be setting up a new company file from scratch, you're gonna be working with a company file that has already been set up. So your goal there is really to deconstruct what has already been put in place and try to, try to see if you can understand the process and then continue on with that process, possibly making changes as you go. Usually if the process is built well, those changes being small changes, not huge changes. So that's the first thing that we'll start out with is actually starting a new company file and then saving this for the second half of the course. And you wanna make sure that once you, if you're using this for practice, if you can get access to this for practice, you wanna make sure that you're maximizing that 30 days, if that's what you have for practice, and then turn it off at the end of that, <laughs> at the end of that process uh, so, you don't, so you don't get charged. And then if you wanna be purchasing the software, you want to look into discounts and whatnot and seeing if you can talk to, to an accountant and see if you can get the best price on the purchase side. So there's also the student version. Now, this you have to be uh, you have to be able to be eligible as a student. Uh, and usually that would mean that you're going to some kind of accredited school would be one of the conditions. But you can look at the at the website here for more information on that the easiest way to get to this place is usually not from the intuit website but rather just type it into your favorite browser quickbooks online uh, education edition or free quickbooks online for students or something like that and you'll and then you can you'll usually be easier to find this for some reason so it says here a free platform to help build financial confidence for today's generation get students excited about finances with a flexible interactive curriculum that utilizes real world tools into it for education is a free and flexible financial literacy platform for high school students that offers real world tools to get them excited about finances so this is for high school particularly i think they have some some uh, other educational uh, capacity as well possibly for college students which uh, might be similar to the free 30-day trial but maybe you get it for longer than 30 days right it would be nice to have it for 60 days or something like that we have a long course here we got a lot to we got a lot to go over so it'd be nice to have it for a longer period of time so you could look into these options if you're going to like an accredited institution uh, and and see what you can do there then we have the test drive now the test drive is available to everyone. And uh, the, the good thing about the test drive is that it already has data in it. Now that, that's a pro and it could be a con. It's a pro if we wanna practice navigating the software. If I wanna take a look at reports or I wanna take a look at how to do data input of invoices and bills and whatnot, it's good that it already has data in it because then I can actually look at a report that has information in it because then I can actually enter invoices that have customers, bills that have vendors already assigned, items have already been input into the system. So we can practice using an accounting system that's already built. So if you're completely new to an accounting software, the first thing that we wanna do, as we will do in this course, is use some type of system or some type of, of uh, software that already has data in it so that we can deconstruct it deconstructing something is easier than building something from an engineering kind of standpoint right so if you if you if you if you had to build an engine without ever having seen one that's going to be quite difficult if you see the engine and you're able to take it apart 
then it's much more likely you might be able to put one back together, right? So that's that's the idea. So we'll start the first part of the course here using this tool. Now, it's the great thing about this tool is everybody has access to it. However, it's possible QuickBooks could change the numbers over time, number one. And number two, when you log out of this software and go back into the software, then the numbers will revert back to where they were before. So it's not well suited for a long problem uh, that you want to practice over multiple days because it's going to delete the data that you put into it. Also, if you, are, if you already have a Intuit account, a QuickBooks account, sometimes it gets messed up to try to get into this account because it basically logs you in as a universal login, I think is the general what's happening. So you might want to open it up in like incognito mode or in a different browser than your actual company file if you're using it for practice.